speaking as the future Mario of the Bog Panda gaming universe, I have to say, Mike, that as much as I want people to play Slapdash, links in the description for the video, totally free, folks. Go ahead and grab it. Um, as much as I want many, many people playing Slapdash, I am skeptical that there's going to be a lot of them playing Slapdash on the analog pocket. Uh, what do you think? Well, I mean, we've talked a little bit about the analog pocket and other high-end Game Boy options. And I don't know about you, but I was sitting there and thinking, why pay $250 for a new Game Boy when we could pay $500 for a new Game Boy? That's aluminum. <laughs> you know, a rare precious metal. <laughs> Clearly, I could maybe understand if this is like gold or maybe platinum, even copper, maybe. <laughs> but aluminum, I can melt Coke cans in my <laughs> on my little forge and get you a, a case made for that. But yeah, it um, so it it's a, a limited. You know, they're it's what they do. It's like, hey, we've got a new edition out here. It's super limited to kind of get that fear of missing out going on, folks. So there's not going to be many of them out there, but you can get your own analog pocket. So it's going to be super high-end, high-quality stuff encased in nearly indestructible, highly valuable aluminum uh, for a mere $500, which if my math is right, is two um, Evercade Alphas, right? Yeah. If you pre-order, you'd still have 60 or 40 bucks left over. And there you go. So that's a thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, and yeah, we're still... And as, um, so a, a few people have done videos about this, but um, I think it was RGT85 also pointed out that if you want the dock for it and the adapter so you can play other cartridges on there, like Game Gear and Lynx cartridges, you're at almost $1,000 at that point. Yeah, no. <laughs> so we'll get we'll get our uh, uh, skip it listed like it out of the way really quick here. Skip it for me. <laughs> skip, skip, skip. Not even a a vague consideration. I mean, don't get me wrong; it looks cool, but all of their products look cool. Like they they're obviously well designed. They're obviously very high end. The people who have them speak highly of the quality of these. So I don't doubt that this is a very well made Game Boy. But I also don't doubt I'll never pay five hundred dollars for a Game Boy. No, no. There are many other cost-effective solutions for you to play Slapdash, folks, <laughs> than the than the the analog pocket. So go for those. Uh, but uh, yeah, it. Um, I guess there's a I guess there's a market for for this. It, but I just you know particularly, I mean, I'm waiting for their Nintendo sixty four, which. I can only imagine. Well, that, uh, that was the other thing that I wanted to bring up. So when we were talking before, when we were talking about the Warrior 64, one of the things I was on the fence with with that was, do I wait and see how much the analog is? But then I thought about it. I'm like, their Game Boy is $250. There's no way this is coming in under $300. It's probably going to be more like $400. Well, now they have a $500 Game Boy. <laughs> so who knows where their Nintendo 64 is going to land? But I can guarantee you it's way more than I paid for my Warrior 64, which all in for the system and controllers, I'm at about 200 bucks on that, which is less than I paid for my wife's Nintendo 64 when you factor in that I had to buy an adapter and I bought an upscaler for that separately. So way less than that. I'm happy with my purchase. <laughs> I was just playing my Warrior 64 prior to recording this. I just picked up Castlevania 64. And I'm just going to spoiler for everybody. I think that's a misunderstood game. I've only ever seen negative things about it. I'm having a lot of fun so far. But that's not the point. The point is, I'm glad I didn't wait for their <laughs> Nintendo 64. Because I guarantee I'm not paying whatever it is that they're going to ask for it. If we're up to five hundred dollars for a Game Boy, and again, nearer to a thousand, if you want the the dock and the adapters for it, there's no way that I'm putting out a thousand dollars or anywhere in that range for a Nintendo sixty four. 
Yeah. And I, I mean, I understand like people get, you know, designer handbags and <laughs> kind of, kind of show, show off. I am, I'm of the means to get the best qualities out there and all that, that kind of thing. You same thing with vehicles sometimes. Um, I, I don't know who's going to be super impressed to say, wow, you've got a $500 game boy. It's just, I just, I don't think that's going to give you any cachet yet. I, I could be wrong. Uh, folks in the comments, let us know if we're misreading this situation entirely. Um, but it just seems, um, it just seems crazy that, that if, if you're going to have, I mean, and again, their products look fantastic, visually appealing, yeah, this, quality. I think it's fair to say that we're not saying we don't think quality wise that this is going to be a good product because pretty much universally people have, have spoken of how good and how high end their products are. It's a question of what you're willing to pay for it. And you have to remember that this is something that hypothetically is meant to be portable. You put it in your pocket, as the title suggests, and carry this around. If the base unit puts you back $500 and then hundreds more for the dock and the adapters and things like that, are you going to carry this around with you? <laughs> something you spent $1,000 on? Keep the Rolex. Give me your analog pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we going to see people get robbed for analog pockets? Yeah. Yeah, which you know you you gotta you gotta flash it. You gotta show people, look at what I've got. You know, that may not go well for you. Who knows? So <laughs> they're like, "Wow, he spent a grand to play slapdash." Money well spent, though. Money well spent. It is. I mean, if you're going to play any game, obviously slapdash, where you get to take control of Kelly Tool himself, running from police, running from guard dogs, pounding pitchers of beer, the Kelly Tool that we all know and love. And guess what, guys? It's very hot outside. It's terrible. We're going to reject that. And we're going to release Slapdash Spooky Season. That's going to be the fall themed reskin of Slapdash. You know what? That's also going to be free. And all you have to do is subscribe to this channel. You know how much that is? It's free. It's $500. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but if you want to play it in an analog pocket, yeah, it's going to cost you at least five hundred. Yeah, it's going to be five hundred dollars plus a free slap version of Slapdash. So. Yeah, plus a free download of the game. So that's a that's a challenge, but yeah, and so one, you know, the sad part is I think we pretty effectively blown any chance of analog ever <laughs> dropping. But guys, a you should over. totally send us the Nintendo sixty four so we can review. Yeah, <laughs> these are the guys we want to talk about. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'll I'll live with that burden, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, but we'd be interested in, in, uh, hearing from the folks out there. If, uh, like I said, if we're wrong, help us, help us understand where we're wrong, but this just seems crazy, totally crazy. But, uh, and if, um, my dollars will go elsewhere. Cause I just think there's a lot of other things I'd like to have before, um, another Game Boy. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing in my game room at the moment which consists of four arcade cabinets, soon to be the bar top as well, and just about every console. There's nothing in there I paid $500 on its own for. Yeah, even your At Games Mini, the Legends Ultimate Mini, was under that price point. So Yeah, that was less than $500 as well, with the pinball kit and everything. Yeah. So we're open to learning where we're wrong, but we don't think we are. <laughs> but uh, anything else, sir? No, I mean, I think we covered it. Again, I think the only way we can really understand this company better is if they send us their Nintendo 64. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> to totally then, good. Then yeah. maybe we can, we can see what the hype is all about yeah. and better inform the Panda Army. Yeah. And obviously, I know Analog is going to want that as well. That they need the panda bum. So, and anybody watching this who can help us bring Slapdash to Nintendo 64, let's make Slapdash 64 a reality. Yeah, that would be awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Thanks, everybody.
Bug Panda. <laughs>